All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to class. Good to see so many people in the chat already chatting it up. Um, good to see a lot of familiar, familiar names, familiar faces, and some new people as well. Everybody's saying hi, 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 hi. I'm seeing, who am I seeing? Rosa's here, Zainab, Lucas, Salah, Navjot, giving a whole bunch of shout outs. Shout outs to, we've got Mumbai in the house. We've got Vietnam and Cambodia and Pakistan and Bangladesh. I see lots of, lots of nationalities and countries out there. That's super cool. Partho is saying hi. Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, so anybody who doesn't know me, if it's your first time, I'm Sean. And I'm going to be your teacher for the next hour or so. Alejandra's back. Asta Pascoa from Brazil, of course. Cool. Representing the, the globe. All right. So, yeah, I'm Sean. I pop in here every Thursday morning. Well, Thursday morning um, Vancouver time, okay? So I'm at the Canadian College of English Language in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Dominican Republic, Peru, Ukraine. Nice. All right. So you guys are all over the place. I'm in Vancouver and it's morning time. It's 9 o'clock in the morning for me on Thursday. I'm not sure what time it is where you are. Alejandra, yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, slightly new hairstyle. Got to shorten it up every once in a while, let it, let it grow. Trey's from Texas. Trey Brown. Thanks for coming. Everybody's welcome. So yeah, if it's your first time, welcome. If, it, if you've been here uh, before, good to see you again. Um, I'm the best teacher you've ever seen? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that for sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. um, well, we're going we're gonna to jump right into it, okay? So if it's your first time here, how it works is I'm going to I'm going to do some talking for a bit. If you have questions about anything that I say or anything that we're, we're doing in class, you can put your questions in the chat and we'll try to answer them um, as, as quickly and as often as we can, as best as I can. Algeria's here, cool. All right. Um, I don't think I have a, a moderator today. I don't think Zach's in there. Um, if he is, he can show himself. but. Uh, I don't think he's out there. I think I'm on my own today. So I'll try to uh, get to your questions as best as I can, OK? Um, and also, a little bit later on, I'm going to be asking you questions. And I'm going to ask you to put those um, answers in the chat, OK? So let's get, let's get rolling here on this beautiful Thursday morning. I'm going to jump into my lesson here. All right. So. I saw some people already asking about the lesson today, about a particular word that I use to describe what we're doing in, in class today. And don't worry, I'll, I'll explain it. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, so to start, in this class, in previous classes, we've talked a lot about making bold statements, making uh, strong kind of powerful statements in English, different sentence structures that give your, give your statement some, some power if you want to, to say something, um, as I said, a bold statement, right? You don't want all of your sentences to be kind of weak and bland. So we've been talking about different methods, different techniques and structures you can use to make your sentences um, strong, basically. Give them power, give them strength, give them a little bit of a little bit of spice, some flavor, right? So just a quick reminder of what I'm talking about. In previous classes, we've talked about how you can invert word order to make your statement stronger, right? Only if we work together can we solve the nation's problems, <laughs> all right? Um, that's inversion. That's a way of making your sentences stronger, okay? We've talked about using um, noun clauses at the beginning of a sentence, right, to emphasize something. What upset her was his comment. Okay, we've talked about that before in class. And just a couple weeks ago, we were talking about intensifiers, right? We were talking about little words like super, super excited. I'm super excited to be here with you guys. Although some of you are probably super tired because, I don't know, who knows what time it is in Cambodia right now. I'm assuming it's 
it's got to be what one o'clock in the morning maybe all right yeah the couple again keeps keeps coming back we're not going to actually talk about that that fighting couple today don't worry so super excited we talked about words like positively right this food is positively awful now all of these words all of these different sentence structures make your sentences make your statements stronger more emphatic more intense right she is very excited this guy not so excited yeah but today we're not going to talk about that today we're actually we're going to go kind of the opposite direction today all right because to be to be perfectly honest oh there you go an intensifier perfectly honest I mean, you don't want all of the sentences that you, that you use to, to be strong and bold. I mean, a little bit of spice is nice, but, you know, there's a reason why when you get some hot wings, it comes with that, that dip over here, right? And even some celery sticks, right? You got to balance it out. You can't just be throwing intense, emphatic statements at people all the time. They're, they're going to run away, right? So... What I want to talk about a little bit today, or actually not a little bit, all right, and, and that's actually what we're talking about. I want to talk about how we go the opposite way with our language sometimes. That, yes, sometimes you want to make bold, strong statements, but sometimes you want to, you want to be soft, right? Sometimes you want to soften your language to take a, away a little bit of that, that heat, that power, Right? Vivek is asking about awful. Awful means very bad. Right? So the food was very bad. You guys are excited to join the class, just like me? <laughs> yeah, good. Super excited? Okay, so today we're looking at ways of softening the language, right? Of kind of reducing the impact of the language. Now, what we're going to talk about today is not just for writing and not just for speaking. I think I call this a communication skills class because for the first part, we'll focus on um, speech and then in the second half, we'll focus on writing, okay? As academic writing primarily, okay? So this is what we're talking about today. Hedges and qualifiers. I'm kind of putting a bunch of different words um, together in one category today because it's all about as I said, kind of softening or reducing the impact of your language. Yeah, I think prob that was probably a leopard, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I think so. The second one, definitely not. Definitely not a leopard, this guy. All right, so hedges and qualifiers. Somebody in the chat asked before I even started the class, what is a hedge? Well, actually, I mean, this guy, that's a hedge. Isn't that a hedgehog? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a hedgehog didn't even plan that but a hedge most people think of a hedge as a type of kind of a bush a tree that you use to to separate um, property right sometimes you have a a bit of a bush around your your house or your your yard okay but that's not what we're talking about today a hedge or a qualifier sometimes these are words or phrases expressions in English that we use to reduce the impact of our statements and sentences. So anytime, and there's such a huge, broad um, category of these words that we can't possibly talk about them all, but they're words that we use in speech and in writing to reduce the impact of what we're saying. They, they soften the language, okay? Now that's what a hedge is, any word or phrase that, that softens the language, but I guess the, the big question that, that students will ask me in class is why would I want to reduce the impact of my words, right? Rose is saying hedges are the same as qualifiers or are they different? Um, in some cases the, the two kind of uh, blend a little bit, Rosa. I think a qualifier, qualifiers we use to hedge. There, don't worry too much about the difference between the two. Um, it's, as I said, it's a very broad, a broad category. Okay, qualifiers. To answer your question a little bit better, is qualifiers are typically um, uh, adjectives and adverbs, modifying words. Right? Hedges can be words. They can be phrases. They can be um, clauses. Okay, but they're they're very 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 similar, very related. 
So the question is, why would I want to reduce the impact of my words and soften my language, right? Um, and there are many different reasons to do it, okay? To avoid seeming impolite, right? In, in daily conversation, particularly when someone is learning a, a second language, they, they make statements that sometimes to, to a native speaker could sound kind of short and curt and not super friendly, okay? So sometimes we use words to soften what we're saying so that we don't want to sound impolite, we don't want to sound angry, right? We don't want to sound boastful, like we know everything, right? We want to sound a little bit more modest, right? Particularly here in Canada, right? We like to, we like to sound modest even if we aren't, right? We want to sound polite, even if what we're, we are saying is not polite, basically, okay? So for the first part of class, that's kind of what I want to focus on. I want to look at, at how we soften our criticism, how we say something kind of negative, but kind of take away the, the harshness of it, like that, like that cool dip for your, for your hot chicken wings, right? <laughs> All right, and sometimes you want to use these words to be actually more persuasive, right? If you're a little bit more polite, a little bit less boastful, maybe you can get people to do what you want them to do. By the way, maybe what I just said there is a hedge, okay? That's a hedge word. And also you want to avoid making sweeping generalizations. Sahini is saying, is this hedge a new term in English grammar? Um, well, relatively, I guess. I mean, the, the term hedge, I think, has been around for about uh, 30 or 40 years, I think. Um, but it has, yeah, it, the, the concept has grown a lot over the last couple of years. Also, another hedge, I just said, I think, meaning I'm trying to reduce the certainty of what I'm saying, okay? So this is what we're talking about today. But the last one, to avoid making sweeping generalizations. Often, and this is what we'll focus on later with writing, okay, is that oftentimes in student writing, you make statements that um, are way too broad and, and generalized, stereotyping and whatnot. So we're going to avoid that, okay. It's not so much grammar, it's more just communication. It's writing and it's, it's, it's speaking, to answer your question there too. Okay, so the first thing I want to focus on is being tactful. Tactful, oh, my phone's going off here. I'm going to turn that down. There we go. Being tactful, that's a good adjective, right? Tactful means the ability to say something may be unpleasant, but sounding a little bit softer, okay? Steve, the sweeping generalization, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll come back to that, okay? All right, so being tactful. The ability to say something without offending someone, without hurting their feelings or making them angry um, by what you're saying. Okay? And yeah, Zainab, Steve will come back to the concept of generalization, I promise. Okay? All right, hang in there. <laughs> okay. So, adverbs. Now, these words, these are words that we're going to start off simple, okay? And then we're going to. Um, build upon it, get a little bit more uh, advanced and, and challenging, okay? So words like kind of, sort of, a little, a bit, these words are um, hedge words, okay? And when they first started looking at words that we use in English to, to reduce um, the impact of the language, these were kind of the first words to be identified as hedge words, all right? Diplomatic, yeah, that's a good word too. You want to be diplomatic. So kind of, sort of, a little and a bit. These are hedge words because they, they take kind of the certainty or the absolute idea away, right? They, they stop you from making an absolute certain statement. So take, for example, this iceberg is blue, okay? Well, is it blue? Hmm. It's kind of blue, right? Now, you guys know how to use this, this adverbial use of kind of, right? It's not, yeah, it's kind of blue, right? It's sort of blue. It's a little, it's a little blue, <laughs> right? But you're not going to get offended if I say that this iceberg is blue. This is how we're going to talk about this today. Now, 
she's obviously having a good time at this movie. But this guy, he thinks this movie is boring, right? This movie's boring. But sometimes if you make a statement like that, it can sound, um, as I said before, a little curt, short, maybe too direct. You want to soften that. And then that, this is when we use something like kind of, okay? This movie's kind of boring. Now when we say this movie is kind of boring, what we mean is this movie's boring, right? This movie's really boring. I'm bored. But again, we want to soften that impact, right? We don't want her, because she's having a good time, we don't want to upset her. So we're saying this movie is kind of boring. It's sort of boring. It's a little boring, right? So this is what we're talking about, how to soften that language up a bit. Now, to be fair, she might still not be happy with him if he said the movie is a little boring, but it's better than just the blunt statement, okay? So this is a kind of a hedge. It's reducing that, that impact, right? It's being polite. Rosa's saying, Mar Mark is distracting you on Facebook? <laughs> now that soup looks delicious here. Let's look at another example. The soup was salty, right? So a, a complaint in a restaurant. How's your soup today? Well, actually, the soup is salty. Again, it sounds a little bit too direct. You might say, the soup was a bit salty. It's a little salty. It's kind of salty. And again, if someone says this to you, if you're a server in a restaurant, if an English-speaking uh, customer says that my soup is a little salty, what they mean is, this soup is too salty. All right. Vivek, yeah, good one. <laughs> All right. So other things that we use, other verbs and modals that we use to, to kind of lessen the impact, we say seem, appear, looks like, and then we use modals like may or might, right? These words that we throw in there as hedge words to soften the language. So this guy says, you sent me the wrong file in the workplace. You don't want to upset your colleagues. This guy says, you sent me the wrong file. Again, this, well, this guy looks pretty happy. He, you don't have to worry about him too much. <laughs> okay. But you might want to soften it a little bit. And this is how you can do it. It looks like you sent me the wrong file. It appears that you have sent me the wrong file. This food is a little spicy. <laughs> that's, that's a good example, right? Now again, in this case, it looks like is a hedge expression. It's reducing that impact, okay? Or your boss says, change your strategy. Change your strategy. A little, a little curt, right? So how can we soften it? Well, she, she could say, you should change your strategy, okay? But let's soften it even more. You might want to change your strategy. You might want to change your strategy, again, is a hedging word. Now, the important thing about this, too, is to keep in mind, you don't have to necessarily use this word. If you want to be direct with people, that's OK. But if your boss says to you, you might want to change your strategy, or even you might want to consider changing your strategy, because consider is, is making it even softer, right? You might want to consider your strategy, or I think, I think, that's the saying, you might want to consider your strategy. If your boss says that to you, he or she is not saying that you might want to consider your strategy. <laughs> She's telling you, change your strategy, all right? That's an important kind of distinction to make in the language. And the same thing going back to this guy, if he says, it looks like you may have sent me the wrong file. Again, he's being polite. He's hedging it. But what he means is, you sent me the wrong file. <laughs> okay? Adam Stone is saying it's a kind of mild expression. Exactly. That's exactly it, right? You're, you're putting a little bit of mild, mildness to it. Good. Now, again, this is all about kind of social interaction, right? How to reduce the possibility of, of argument or confrontation. We, in this class, we talk a lot about arguing. So this is good, uh, you know, good ways of, of avoiding that. A little bit later, we'll talk, we'll talk about academic writing, okay? So 
the thing about hedges and hedging your language is that some people will tell you not to do it. And it's a, it's a bit of a controversial thing, right? It's a bit of a controversial thing. Because some people say that in business, for example, you want, you want power, you want confidence, you want assertiveness. And when you use these hedge words, you, hedge words are like vampires um, sucking the power out of your vocabulary. And if you, I mean, you may, you may want to uh, follow that logic. I mean, if you're a Wall Street guy or something. But what I'm talking about here is social interaction with humans, right? I'm not talking about um, going into a boardroom and, and appearing assertive. But absolutely, like everything else in language, you have to use this in moderation, right? If you use too many hedge words, eh, you maybe kind of want to sort of maybe think about possibly changing your strategy. You are going to sound like you have no confidence, right? So you have to be kind of uh, balanced between not being rude and not sounding um, uh, like you have no confidence. Okay? All right. So how about this? Let's, let's start kind of simple. Okay? We'll start kind of, kind of easy, kind of. See how many hedge words I'm using here? Kind of, kind of. I'm going to put this in here. Can I paste that link? into the chat, let's see. Oh yeah, all right, so I have put a link in the chat for you guys, and we're gonna keep it simple for starters. And then we're gonna get into um, hedge words and, and uh, hedging in academic writing. So I've put a link for you guys to open up, or you can just check out the screen here. I'll make it nice and big for everybody to see. I'm just gonna give you five um, words here or five sentences. Actually, you know what? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm getting way too excited. I've got two more things to show you first, and I'll do that quickly, and then I'll give you the activity, okay? I'm, I'm super excited today, as you can see. <laughs> right. Lucas is saying, is there a difference between kind of and kinda? Well, kind of is actually what you are saying, right? It's, that's what it would look like in, in writing, but kinda, that's what it sounds like. Okay, that's the pronunciation when we speak naturally. Okay, so yeah, I'll get to that question in a minute. So two more things actually, guys, before I get into the, the exercise. The word really and the expression I'm afraid. These are two other ways of, of kind of hedging. Okay, and Sahini, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at your, your comment in a minute when you guys get to work here, okay? So I don't want to. Again, sounds very blunt. Sometimes we soften it with something like, I don't really want, I don't really want to, right? In a negative statement to soften the blow of that. I don't really want to. What that means is, I don't want to, okay? Um, again, it's, it's kind of a polite way of expressing yourself. To be tactful, to be diplomatic, softens it up. But it's, you have to be careful with it because it's very different from I really don't want to, right? That's kind of the crazy thing about the language is that one little change of position in the sentence and you've got two very different statements. I don't really want to and I really don't want to. One of them is soft, one of them is, is stronger, okay? Look at this one for example. I don't really like this camera. I don't really like this camera. It really kind of softens the language a bit, okay? And then one more, I have bad news. I don't know why this doctor is talking to her in, in a park. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but oftentimes we introduce something negative with, I'm afraid I have bad news. I'm afraid I have bad news, which technically is a hedge because it softens the impact of what comes after it. Okay? So now, let's get back into that exercise okay so I sent you this oh and I see a bunch of people on there that's good now as I've said I've given you five statements that seem a little bit direct a little bit curt how about take maybe two minutes because this is kind of fast I want you to put a word or words into the statements to soften them to make them a little bit more tactful to 
to reduce the possibility of um, upsetting somebody. Okay, so I'm going to pop off the screen. While you guys are working, I'll look at some of your questions in the chat and, and then I'll get back to them when I, when I come back, okay? And then we'll go over it together. All right, so get to work, guys. I'm going to put the music on. I'm going to disappear. Make these sentences a little bit more tactful, okay? Go for it. All right, good stuff coming in on the chat. So many answers, such good stuff. So many people, it's awesome. I see Luciana's back. Good to see you. Long time no see. All right, lots of answers coming in from Lana, from Saad. 
Cool. All right, let's go over some of these together. So the first one says, I'm busy right now. I'll call you back later. It sounds a little bit curt, a little bit um, short, right? So let's soften it up. And what did you guys say? So Saad said, yeah, I'm a little, he said, I'm, I'm a little busy right now. I'll call you back. You even put, I promise I'll call you back, which is, which is nice. Yeah, it's nice to promise. Good. I'm a little busy right now. That's great. I think someone else said, I'm afraid I'm busy right now. I'm afraid I'm busy right now. I'll call you back later. You could even make a question if you want to be really polite and say, can I call you back later? Or you can make a com do a combo, right? I'm afraid I'm a little, I'm afraid I'm a little busy right now, right? Really soften it, okay? I'm afraid I'm a little busy right now. I'll call you back later. Good, 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 good. Rosa saying you didn't answer with three sad faces. That's okay. You're having internet issues, I see. All right, so B, um, I forgot to bring my assignment today. Now this is, this is survival skills that I'm giving you guys here, okay? You walk into a classroom when your assignment is due and your teacher says, where's your homework? And you say, I forgot to bring my assignment. You, you, you might not get anywhere with that. You might, you might get in trouble, right? But as some of you guys said, Suede said, I'm afraid. Somebody else said what? It looks like? Who said it looks like? Or I seem. Let me see. Wow, so many questions. So, yeah, Alejandro said it seems, right? It seems. It seems I forgot to bring my assignment today, right? <laughs> That's great. Or, as I said, some of you said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I forgot to bring my assignment today. Now, again, that softens it a little bit maybe get a little bit more sympathy from your teacher, right? Maybe giving you some tricks here to get out of trouble. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Rosa, there you go. It, it, appears, it appears that I've forgotten my, my assignment. A little, a little bit more formal, I would say, but, um, but yeah, that's good. Yeah, don't be sad. <laughs> All right. C, I'm not in the mood to go to a party tonight. Your roommate, your friend says, hey, let's go to a party. And you just say, I'm not in the mood. Let's soften it up. And what did you say? Yeah, ask the has, has it, good. Um, yeah, Zainab got it too. I'm not, I'm not really in the mood to go to a party tonight. I'm not really in the mood. Um, someone else said, might have been, who was it, Alejandro maybe? said, um, I don't think I'm in the mood to go to a party. Now that's another good, good kind of hedge. I don't think I'm in the mood. Okay, I don't think I'm in the mood. Just though that introductory I think or I don't think really softens the, the impact of, of what you're saying there, that's good. All right, two more, and then we're gonna get into some other stuff here. You forgot to complete these questions. Who's got an answer for D, 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 D? Yeah, Vivian, there you go. You're saying, I think, I think you forgot to complete these questions, right? Same as we, we just talked about there with, with C. I think you forgot it. Um, reduces that impact, makes it a little bit nicer. Or, um, it looks like, it looks like you forgot to complete these questions. Right? Just a little bit more polite. Steve's saying, I don't feel like going to a party tonight. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. I hope that's not true, Steve. <laughs> well, I guess it's only Thursday. I don't know what, what, what night you guys go to parties, but I certainly don't go to a party on a Thursday night. Um, I'm at home practicing my teaching skills for you guys. <clears throat> well, I guess you guys are probably, it's Thursday night now for you guys. You're obviously not at a party unless you're, unless you're bringing me to a party, which is an idea, I guess. <laughs> so E, if you're having trouble with your account, go to the bank and speak to someone. Again, sounds a little bit unfriendly, right? A little bit cold to the point, maybe, but... Um, 
Who's got one? Now, you know what? The one that I was thinking of... Now, Viv Vivek, you said, like, please. I'm sorry, but if you're having trouble, please go. This is one thing that you could put in here, too. If you're having trouble with your account, you may want to go. You may or you might want to go to the bank and speak to someone, right? Now, ask the, and I think someone else said that too. If you said you may, if you just say you may go to the bank, remember that may sometimes expresses permission, right? If you're having trouble, you may go to the bank. It sounds like I'm saying um, I'm allowing you to do this. Okay, you may. You say you may want to, meaning it's in your interest to go. Good one. Vivek, that last one for, for D is good too. Yeah, it seems you, you might have forgotten to complete these questions. That's great. Yeah, Sahini is saying like, it would be wise. That's a good one too, right? It would be wise to go to the bank. That's, that's a nice way of softening it too. And Sahini, too, to answer your question from before, you're, you're right that these hedge words or expressions are not specifically adjectives or adverbs, but any word, phrase, or expression that we use to, as I said, reduce the impact of, of the, the sentence or statement. So it's not really grammar. It's more about um, the language itself, communication with the language. Aldorian is saying, you might go. I would still say for that one, you might want to go, okay? Um, but that's good, guys. Really, really good. All right, so let's get away from being polite. Well, so let's continue being polite, right? But let's talk, about, let's talk about being cautious. Now, this is really where, where hedging comes into play in academic writing, writing assignments for, for school is that when you say, when I'm talking about being cautious, I'm talking about being careful with your statements, sometimes in essays, and I see a lot of student essays, a lot of student essay writing assignments, that um, they make statements that are too bold and too generalized. Okay, Luciana, which one, you, can you check mine, is it okay? Which, which one, Luciana, tell me which one and I'll go back and check it out, okay? So being cautious, I'm talking about not overstating something, not sounding too certain um, or making a, a broad statement in your writing that will actually weaken your point, okay? What's the meaning of caution, Zainab? It's, it's like being careful, being careful, okay? It means making sure that your statements are not too strong, okay? Now obviously this goes against some of the other classes that I've taught about making strong statements. You want to get that, get that balance, okay? So let's look at a couple examples. Excessive internet use will negatively affect a person's sleep cycle. Okay, so excessive internet use, meaning too much internet use, will negatively affect a person's sleep cycle. Look at her, I don't know if some of you, are, maybe some of you are like that now, maybe, <laughs> watching me, <laughs> okay? Um, this one is an overstatement, right? You're, it's a generalization. When you're saying e excessive internet use will negatively affect a person's sleep cycle, well, that's, that's not necessarily true. That's not always true. It's not true for everybody. It's, I guess it's true for Alejandra, right? But not for everybody. And that's what, we, what, that's what we're talking about. That's where these hedge words come in to help us avoid sentences like this. And I'll come back to this sentence. Let's look at another one. Young people are better with computers than people over 50. All right, young people are better with computers than people over 50. Now, some of you may think that that's true. However, it depends on the person, just like, just like the first one. It depends on the young person. It depends on the person over 50. This, getting back to, I think, um, was it, who was it? Was it Steve who was asking me about generalizations? This is a generalization because you're talking about young people. You're applying one idea to all young people. 
But the, the problem here, and Pascoa, exactly, right? I mean, you might agree with this, Pascoa, but there are some people that are over 50 that are very good with computers, and the problem is that young people is also too broad, too. I mean, I have, I have my, my kids on my cup here, right? They are, they are young people, and this one, she's not using a computer, okay? So, Pascoa, your, your computer skills are better than hers, and she's a young person. <laughs> okay. All right. So Rose is saying in argumentative essays, that's exactly it, right. So argumentative essays, scientific uh, essays, right, anything science-based, you want to be careful not to make too generalized statements, too certain. You don't want to be too certain because it can actually weaken what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back to those sentences in a minute. Hedging. She is cute, but of, of course, of course she is, right? Mm -hmm. Luck was on her side, right? <laughs> Hedging helps avoid generalizations, right? It keeps you safe from generalizations. It helps to avoid overstating. All right, Samuth is asking about the time for live classes. I'll talk about that at the, at the end, okay? All right, good. Now, the, the kind of counterintuitive part about hedging is that by, by reducing the strength of your sentence, you're actually strengthening um, your essay or your assignment, right? You're putting little words in your sentences to soften them, but in my opinion, there's a difference between softening and weakening. You're not making your sentences weak, necessarily. You're making them a little bit less certain to avoid generalizations. Now, if you go back later and listen to this um, class, I'm using so many hedge words and qualifiers in my speech. Things like a little and might, and uh, we, we do it all the time. But let's, let's look at this. I'm gonna put five sentences, or maybe four, I forget, up on, <laughs> up on the screen, and then I'm gonna pop off and I would like you guys to look at each sentence and find me the word or words that reduce the impact of these sentences and avoid a generalization or overstatement, okay? So, driving while under the influence of alcohol is often the cause of more serious accidents. If it is left unchecked, it seems likely that this behavior will continue. The results of this study suggest a connection between diet and mental health. And it is said that the musician died of an apparent drug overdose. Okay? Is that everything? I think that's, I think that's all three. They're all four. Okay, so I'm going to disappear for about 60 seconds. Read these sentences and find me the words that soften it and take away the overstatement or generalizations. Okay? And, of course, put your answers in the chat, guys. Okay? Find me the hedging words. Go for it.
All right, now I'm popping back pretty pretty quickly back in because we're uh, we're running out of time. I mean, we still have 15 minutes or so left. We got lots of time, but I want to make sure we get through all of this stuff, okay? But this this class might be a two-parter. <laughs> These all bounced from my head. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Vivek, you're okay. All right, so let's look at these sentences. Um, and yeah, most of you guys found the hedging words, right? In number one, driving while under the influence of alcohol is often the cause of more serious accidents. That, that adverb of frequency takes away a little bit of that certainty, right? If I say driving while under the influence is the cause of accidents, that's too strong, it's too certain, it's too much of a generalization. You want to take that away. You want to hedge it with the word often. Okay, good. Number two, if it is left, if it is left unchecked, unchecked means if you do nothing, okay? If you do nothing, it seems likely that this behavior will continue. Now you've got kind of two hedge words or hedge expressions in there. It seems, right? That will take away a little bit of that certainty. And likely is another adverb or sometimes um, adjective that, that expresses less certainty, right? So this is another kind of hedge. Good, all right. Number three, the results of the study suggest a connection. They suggest a connection. They don't, they don't prove it, they don't show it definitively or absolutely, but they suggest a connection between diet and mental health. Again, especially in scientific studies, we use words like suggest or indicate in order to take away a little bit from that um, absolute statement, right? Good. And number four, now number four, I threw two of them in there just to see if you caught it. And most of you caught one or the other. Number four is, it was said that the musician died of an apparent drug, overdo drug overdose. So you've got two um, hedge expressions in there. It was said, this is a good hedge because it's saying, I'm not, I'm not saying this, somebody else said this, right? Don't blame me for this, all right? And apparent, apparent, is one that sometimes you'll see in the news. Apparent or um, alleged or supposed, right? These words, these adjectives that we use to, to take away the certainty of a statement. Yeah, Vivek is saying, yeah, even without the hedging words, the sentences stand, absolutely. If you take most of these hedge expressions out, the sentences are grammatical, it's fine, but it does change the, as we said, the, the the strength of the statement, okay? Yeah, and apparently is also a hedge word, Eldorian, good one. Okay, so the whole point of this is, yeah, to try to avoid these bold statements, um, avoid is, other generalizations like everybody knows. Students sometimes put that one in there. Everybody knows that whatever. I mean, if you say everyone, that's a generalization, right? Words like undeniable, as well, you want to be careful with words like that, okay? <laughs> All right. So, let's go over a list of words that we use to hedge. And I think this class is gonna be a two-parter because we've got lots to cover, okay? So, modals like can, could, may, or might. Just like we talked about with being tactful, words like may or might can also take away the certainty, the absoluteness or the um, take away from it being a categorical statement, right? Kind of take that away, <clears throat> which is necessary in some cases. You got the correct answers? Awesome. Who, who are you saying, I don't get one often? Well, often, well, well, okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. Who are you? That's okay. So modal verbs, like may or might, can and could. Verbs, like seem, appear, tend to is a good one, suggest, indicate, estimate. These words take away, as I said, the certainty of your statement um, <clears throat> and soften it a bit, a bit, right? So let's get back to this. Excessive internet use will negatively affect a person's sleep. Well, how can we um, hedge this sentence, right? 
this class is undeniably awesome, while that one, yeah, you don't have to hedge that statement. That's fine. That's, that's, that's true. <laughs> All right. Excessive internet use, you just say will. You can't be that certain. Can, right? Just that slight change. Excessive internet use can negatively affect a person's sleep cycle. As we said here, Alejandra, her sleep cycle's all messed up because of me and the internet, maybe, <laughs> right? But other people, they can handle it. So take away will, replace it with can, could, may, or might, OK? <laughs> and yeah, now Jod, you're putting adverbs. We'll talk about adverbs in a second, too. That's good. Young people are better with computers than people over 50, um, although Pascoa uh, agreed with this. <laughs> you still have to qualify it a little bit. And this is, this is what the word qualify means, right? You say a, a bold statement like this, and then you want to modify it. You want to change it so that it's not so general, <laughs> OK? So you have to say, let me, let me qualify this statement. Young people are often better, right? Meaning most of the time, young people, most young people, or tend to. Young people tend to be better with computers than people over 50. And Fatima is saying generally. Generally speaking, that's a good one. Generally speaking, young people may be better or tend to be better with computers than people over 50. I really like that. The verb tend to is a really good way of hedging your statement um, to, to get away from absolutes. Good. OK. Adjectives that we use to hedge. Probable, possible, apparent, and alleged. Now, I mentioned that before. OK. How are we doing for time? Good, good, good. And then lots of adverbs. There's so many different words that we use um, that it, it would be impossible for me to, to teach them all to you. But um, irrefutable. It is irrefutable. Irrefutable is the same as undeniable. Just be careful with those, those claims, Navjot. Yeah. Steve, you like tend to? I like that one too. Good. So adverbs of frequency, often, sometimes, usually, they take away that absolute nature of the, st of the statement. As we said, um, young people often are better with computers. Not always, but often. Adverbs of degree, meaning how much, right? Somewhat, approximately, more or less, more or less, right? In fact, when I was preparing for this class, I so where am I here? I'll go into notes. I'm just going to write a sentence that I saw when preparing for this class. Somebody wrote qualifiers, also known as kind of hedge words. Qualifiers are more or less the opposite. I'm going to have to make this smaller. Opposite of intensifiers. All right, let's put that up there. Qualifiers are more or less the opposite of intensifiers. Now, the, I, I found the funny thing about this sentence is when talking about qualifiers and hedge words, they're using a qualifying expression there too, right? Yeah, so qualifiers are more or less the opposite is not the same as qualifiers are the opposite, right? Qualifiers are more or less. They're, it's a degree, right? They're mostly the opposite. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're talking about here with uh, somewhat and approximately. Okay, now let me show you one more thing, and then I think. Okay, certainty, right? Adverbs like possibly, likely, perhaps, and apparently. Irrefutable, undeniable. You guys are still talking about that in there? Okay. So all of these words we use to hedge our statements. Now, unfortunately, I'm afraid that we don't have enough time to go over the exercise that I want to do. I don't want to rush it. I want to save it. Because I think hedging is important for your writing and for your use of the language. So I'm going to save the exercise that I was going to get you guys to do. And we'll continue that next week, OK? Just so that we have enough time. Let me see if I can bypass 
the exercise so you don't so you don't see it all right we're gonna bypass that and we're gonna go right into the mistake of the week okay because I, I want to take our time a little bit on um, on qualifiers and hedge words because I um, I think yeah as I said I think they're important so we will continue with this next time okay um, and I'm not gonna say we may continue we will continue that's an absolute statement <laughs> okay so because we're so short on time I'm gonna jump into the mistake of the week because you guys get angry if I skip it right so the mistake of the week are you guys ready for it now I'm gonna put a sentence up here and I would like to see if you can spot the mistake in the sentence the first person to put the answer in the chat is undeniably irrefutably the best student in the world at this moment Salah saying bypass what does it mean oh um, bypass as one word put it together and it means to to go around to go around something okay so think about um, trying to avoid construction or something if there's road work that you want to get around it you can bypass it okay meaning um, kind of like pass by right or think about um, bypass um, surgery as a type of yeah skip right exactly <laughs> okay how are you saying can can we hedge a sentence if the sentence refers to a scientific fact well Um, no, I mean, if it's an absolute truth, I mean, if you're saying something that, that is undeniable because it's scientific truth, then you don't have to hedge it. But that's a good question, Huari. Um, if you're talking about your own scientific findings, though, if you're talking about research or something that you have seen or, or found um, in science, that's usually when we kind of hedge our statements. But if you're talking about something that is undeniable, scientific fact although <laughs> in this day and age um, who knows what is undeniable scientific fact I mean lots of people will will deny undeniable scientific fact as well so um, that's a hard that's a hard question to answer but I would say for scientific fact you don't need to hedge it okay all right so Rose is saying what about clauses hmm you're gonna to have to specify that question Rosa and then I'll try to answer it for you okay so mistake of the week we will continue with hedging next week okay here's the sentence find me the mistake I'm gonna pop out for 10 seconds see if you can find it okay go for it guys Yeah, you guys are cruising through it. The Bassish, you got it. Samuth, Sala, Luciana, Trey, Eldorian, Alejandra, everybody's got it. Eldorian got it, but the first to get it is Zainab. Zainab is the fastest person in the world right now when it comes to finding mistakes. <laughs> okay. Good for you. Good stuff, guys. Yeah, you're all you're all cranking out the answer. Good, good, good. Luciana, you got it too. Awesome. Very nice. Now this is a common mistake, but again, it. <laughs> Vivek, you're saying, you're the you're the loser. No, you're nobody's a loser. Everybody's a winner in my class. <laughs> okay. All right. So, the mistake in this sentence: recent 
research has suggested, suggested, there's your, your um, hedge word, right? Has suggested that almost workplace injuries are due to failure to follow safety regulations. All right. Um, sway to saying the failure, uh, yeah, if you said like a failure to or the failure to, that's, o that's okay too. But the, the problem is that word almost. And that's a mistake that, yeah, lots of, lots of ESL students make, right? Almost workplace injuries. You have to be careful with, with that one. But I sometimes hear students say almost with a noun and it creates kind of a mistake, right? When you say almost people believe that Sean is a good teacher. Um, <clears throat> almost people sounds to me scary. What an almost person is something like a, like a like a zombie or something, right? Not quite a person, almost a person, like a part robot, part part human, right? And it's the same thing here. Almost workplace injuries sounds like they nobody was hurt, but they were almost hurt, right? So you guys corrected it, and you're right. You have to change it to most, right? Recent research has suggested that most workplace injuries are due to, due to failure to follow safety regulations, right? Okay, um, so you have to be careful of, of that, most workplace injuries. Good, oh, look at that. Now, yeah, time flies. There was other stuff that I wanted to do in class today having to do with um, hedging, but as I said, <laughs> yeah, Alejandra, it seems likely that we are coming to the end of class. Yes. Yeah, good one. I'm afraid that you are correct, Alejandra. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me pop off the screen here. Back to the red. Yeah, still, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that red is my color. I think green suits me better. Are we allowed to, are we allowed to leave me? Well, yeah, of course, I, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Steve, Steve is asking, is it okay to say almost every workplace injury? Yes, you could say that, yeah. Um, but then you'd have to, if you're saying every, then you'd have to say, I think my sentence was workplace injuries are, almost every workplace injury is, that's good. Okay, so always a good time, guys. It's, I, I always look forward to it. No need to hedge that sentence. That's an absolute truth. Um, <laughs> that it's always a pleasure to pop in here and teach. Again, coming from you, uh, coming to you from the Canadian College of English Language here in Vancouver. If between now and next week you want more classes, of course we've got Mark, Neil, um, Nicole, Josh, all teaching um, different classes at different times. You can check out the schedule. Um, keep, keep watching, keep joining the live classes, watching the videos. Go on Facebook to learn English on Facebook and ask us some questions. And, uh, and of course, keep coming back here. Keep telling your, your friends, all right, your family uh, to come and join us. I want to, as many students as, as we can in here. Yeah, why not? Let's, let's, keep it, let's keep it growing. So next week, we're gonna continue with um, hedging and qualifying statements, among other things. All right, um, until next time, keep practicing your English and, um, and thanks for joining and I'll see you next time. Okay guys, take care, bye.